Hi, is this Michael? Yes, it's Our- really funny. We're going to call you back on another number. I was, I'm just glad to get a number. Oh. <laughs> Is this good, yep. or do you want me to, to, to call you back privately and get a different number to call you on? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm just glad to get a number. Nobody ever calls me. <laughs> and we are glad to get you, Michael. I've been really sick this week contemplating going to the hospital, but I would not do that because I could not miss talking to somebody that I idolize so much as one of the greatest Indian actors of all time. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, the... The other day, I said to my wife, I said, my phone's broken. I don't, I'm not getting any calls. And she goes, no, everybody in your phone is dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's sad but true. I mean, there's just so many of us that have left and everything. And, it, it, and I, want to tell, I want to tell everybody what a fan I am of, of radio. I mean, it was, uh, it was my porthole to information in the 60s and 70s, especially, you know, I grew up in L.A., you know, which is a large Native community, the yeah. biggest urban Indian population in the, in the United States. But when I would go home to Arizona, we didn't have a TV. And I had a, I, a lot of you guys aren't old enough to remember I had a crystal radio set. Oh, I ran off a little. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, uh, I, and, you know, I would uh, they had the National Native Radio back there. And that was the only way we could, you know, and especially as indigenous people, we could get any information. And, and uh, radio plays, wonderful, wonderful radio dramas. And uh, and border radio. I'm an old musician, and I grew up. You know, I mean, people were listening to the Stones and Beatles and border radio. I was listening to Sarah Vaughan and Jimmy Reed and Helen Wolf, and you know, I say it was a it was a just a treasure, of wonderful thing. So, well, being a uh, a musician like you are, what, where did you sing? Did you play? Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody played. Everybody, like I said, we didn't have a lot of. T- everybody in my family played, and and. Uh, uh, I was a fiddle player. I played, oh, God, I played with a lot of the, the, the country groups, and I, I played bass with Etta James for a while. Wow. And I, left, yeah, I left home really young. I was dyslexic, and I quit school early, you know, uh-huh. and uh, I headed for New York. Well, you know, I mean, I didn't want to take the guitar because it was too heavy, so I took my violin, and these truck drivers would drop you off in a cornfield in Kansas, and, <laughs> you know, it's freezing. You might not get a ride for another six hours. So I'd sit and play that, that violin, you know. Well, we were trying to and, remember because Tiffany had a couple of conversations with you on the phone. Tiffany's my daughter, by the way, for her father and daughter. Okay. Came. Uh, but oh, okay. she had thought that you had told her or she didn't know she was getting you mixed up with another guest from the past. Did you not say that you did some old-time radio recreations? Oh, yeah, out of the Autry Museum. Uh, 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 it was just so much fun with the, uh, you know, and we did some, some native dramas and, and uh and uh, uh, it was just so much fun to do because it also, for, for some indigenous actors, it gave us a chance to play something that we could physically never get a chance to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then we had a wonderful band, and, and uh, 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 there was a, 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 I think she was the uh, um, cello player for the symphony, and she would come and she would put on this huge cowboy hat and play the accordion for us and... and uh, a lot of really good musicians would come in and sit with us, and a lot of, of wonderful character actors. But uh, and we did some really interesting uh, dramas. It was it was really interesting. I have a friend named uh, Jackie Old Coyote, and she's uh, she's Absarok uh, Crow native, and the Crow do not do um, uh, uh, fiction. It's against their traditional uh, teachings. Yeah. So she had to write this thing about this Crow basketball team that really didn't exist and she had to go ask permission and they said yeah you can do it and it was just uh, it was so interesting to to to, to do uh, i'm still a, a fan of, of of doing radio well it was a real honor to me because tiffany said because you were busy and we'll be talking about that too that you just got done doing a movie and and you being busy like you are and you told your publicist no i don't want to do an interview right now and they were like well it's for radio radio okay let's do it <laughs> that, that's a big honor to me if one more person asked me to Zoom, I just learned there's a redial button on my phone, you know. No, I'm not you know. Well, I have yeah, to say that I appreciate anybody who still loves doing radio and doesn't necessarily always want to do Zoom because everybody now wants to do Zoom. It's become the new social norm, and I'm just like, I, I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, I get it, you know. I do a lot of uh, animation voices, you know. I do it, it's really fun because... I don't have to be on camera. I can, you know, I can go into the studio and do it in my pajamas, you know. 
it's, it's also really interesting. It's all the people you went to school with used to make gas noises and sent to the principal's office. You know? <laughs> right, right. Well, I, you know, your your work as a voiceover actor is one of the things I wanted to talk about because I had known your acting body of work, Michael, but I had no idea you had done so much voiceover work. Oh, it's really, really, it, it's my favorite. If somebody said, we're going to give you all the animation work to do, you'll never do another film, I would be a happy man. And, and uh, it, 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 it's, uh, I've got a lot of friends that do. I have a friend named Frank Volker. He, he does every dog, every animal. He, he loops Cujo, you know. <laughs> he's the hum, he's the honest. I did uh, George of the Jungle, and he's the monkey. And But uh, I think that Frank had imaginary pets when he was little. Right. <laughs> well, let me ask your opinion. I, I don't know if you think that uh, society or how people view... Uh, actors has changed, but what do you think about the the voiceover industry? Because it used to be, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, that you would have a very small group of people, and they did every voice. For example, Mel Blanc... Dawes Butler. Did, yeah. Dawes Butler. They yeah. did everything from, you know, uh, Caucasian men to, uh, you know, uh, Latin mice like Speedy Gonzalez. But n- now it, it seems that they tend to try to get actors to portray characters that are closer to what their heritage would be. Yeah, it, 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 it was that way even up until the you know, but you know, in the early '80s, it was still there was a small group of people that were doing everybody. But yeah, they try and you know they they, they try and do it, which is, is you know, and it's it's the, the process of acting is to portray something that you're not, but. I think if you're doing a cultural piece and you don't bring somebody that that comes with the culture, you're going to lose something, mm-hmm. you know. Right. What so. do you What do you say to them? Because I'm always interested. Uh, it was a great thing, by the way. We want to talk about that later. To where uh, somebody that was very high up in in the Indian uh, organization that complimented you on Tonto, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But what do you think about, or, or how does it hit you when? They want you to play an Indian character, and they say you don't sound Indian enough, or you you need to sound more like you would hear in the old westerns, which we all know those people were not Indians. Okay. Well, yeah, it's you know there's and there's certain dialogues you know like I can pretty much listen to native speak, and I can tell you if somebody's Navajo or if they're Lakota uh-huh. or if they're from Canada or if they're from Oklahoma. I I can pretty well you know. Because I grew up in an intertribal culture, so I can pretty much much tell. It. And now, now I'm old enough, I get to be all these elders, which is just—I mean, it's just wonderful. I'm working on a piece now that I, I can't talk about the, the TV series that, that I'm not supposed to say yet. But uh, I get to play this 40-year-old witch, 400-year-old witch. I'm sorry, and you know that that's just the crankiest old guy in the world, and yells at all the other witches, kind of get off my lawn, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, I, I grew up with, and, 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 and we get to do humor now. I mean, I grew up with all these funny, funny people. You know, I mean, all my elders were freaking hysterical, yeah. you know. Well, let me ask you a magic question that, that a lot of Twin Peaks actors squirm if I ask it, but I've got to ask because I know everybody is waiting for me to shake some secret out of you that possibly isn't even there, that possibly is not even <laughs> happening. Has David Lynch approached you on doing something new? No. No. And David is, you know, I've known David since the 70s. I tell you, uh, Russ Tamblin and Dean Stockwell were my neighbors. I lived in the Panga Canyon, which was a magic place to live in the 70s. Right. And um, they came by one day with, uh, um, uh, they had Lynch to, uh, with them. And I said, who's that guy? And they said, oh, he's a Christmas. And they showed me the film, The Grandma. Which uh, makes a racer head look like Disney, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> David doesn't even remember it. It was just a brief meeting. But I was, re- you know, I didn't even want to be in the movies. I was kind of a, a half-assed stunt guy. I, I was the worst rodeo rider in the whole world. And and uh, I don't people, you know, I'm I'm a pretty well-known native artist, a jeweler, mm-hmm. and, and I I kept that separate from the actor for years. And about the last twenty years, people go, oh, "This is the same guy." But I was renting my art studio from an agent, and she came down and she said, uh, "You want to be Tonto and the Lone Ranger?" And I went, "No, I don't. You know, I, I'm an American <laughs> Indian member." And I knew Jay. Jay was a wonderful man. And even in that stereotypical role, he was he, he was the real deal. We loved him dearly. And uh, uh, she kept asking me. I went, "No." And she said, "Well, they'll give you fifty grand." And I went, oh, "Kimo Sabi." 
<laughs> and then I talked to Mr. Fraker. I didn't think they'd give it to me, and, and uh, we ended up being really good friends. And I said, look, you sent Tonto to town one time. There's going to be more Indians on your law than custard, you know. And yes, us old guys, we still use the word Indian. You know, we fought for it, and, you know, it, it's a lot of us still use the word, you know, people, you know, I don't even care for the word Native American. I, I like indigenous or, or a tribal affiliation, you know. And I'm a mixed blood person. I'm half Swedish. Yeah, I heard you know, that, a, yeah. There's a huge Swedish German population on the border of of uh, Mexico and Arizona. So there's a lot of Tohoratum people, Yaki people, uh, Navajo people. Hispanic. That'll be part uh, part German, part Swedish. You know, but I grew up in the culture. I was a traditional dancer, and I would go home. I, you know, my grandma would take me down to to Arizona, and you know, when in the summer when everybody's like going surfing and stuff, and I'm in the middle of the desert. But it was it was it was a wonderful time. You know. Now you said that that you knew very well Jay Silverheels. Did Jay yeah. did Jay say anything to you? We all know what Clayton felt about it because it was because of that movie that he lost his mask. I want to know. Well, David, Jay didn't have a chance to, but but uh, and I'll I'll talk about Twin Peaks and I have great Twin Peaks stories if we got time. Uh, I saw uh, uh, they told me they'd taken the mask away from from uh, from Clayton. Yeah, and I was doing one of the celebrity rodeos in Burbank there, and and there he was, and I went up and I said. Uh, Mr. Moore, I'm, I'm Michael Horse. I'm going to introduce myself. He goes, I, I know who you are. And I said, I'm so sorry, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You, you will always be the Lone Ranger. Long may you ride, pal. Yeah. And he went, what a nice thing to say. He told me, he said, look, I know you went to him. He said, I, I know that this, you know, you guys are going to turn me out to the pasture. Let's do this film where I'm halfway through the film or third through the film. I find this young man and he's on the fence between right and wrong. And when I know his character, I will turn my back to the audience and hand him the mask. And I went, oh, those idiots didn't buy that, oh, you know. Right. He said, they just turned me out. But what a, what a sweet man. And he had such fond things to say about Jay, you know. My, my favorite story about Jay Silverheels, because I was told the story by Clayton Moore's <laughs> daughter, who was on the show. We had his daughter on. And she said yeah. they, were, they were shooting one day, and uh, one of the other actors uh, was was standing by Clayton and Jay and the actor went to leave and he went up to Jay and he said uh, see you later Navajo or see you later Indian or, or see you later Chief and Jay Silverheels punched him out he knocked him yeah. out and yeah Jay's daughter told me about a story about him and and, uh, and uh, um, um uh, Olivier, uh, 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 I think it was Olivier. And Olivier asked him why why you 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 indigenous people can't hold your liquor. And he says, "Come on, let's go." And he drank him under the table. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. And then Clayton Moore, he saw the guy laying on the on the ground. He just walked over him and said, "Excuse me." <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny. I I came to peace with the movie last night, Legend of the Lone Ranger. Uh, I was on a radio station in Illinois when it came out. I gave it a really bad review, even though, unfortunately, and this is unprofessional, I know, I didn't even see the movie. It's just, I was like, how dare they, you know, come yeah, up and, yeah. and... But last night, I saw it, and I must say, yeah. while I did not like the portrayal of the Lawn Ranger, I thought that you were awesome as Tonto. I thought you brought great pride and dignity to the Indian culture. And the two best actors in that movie was you and the horse. <laughs> yeah. well, I, did, I did okay. I just... You know, I just wanted to be able to show my face as a powwow again. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a, you know, and it didn't take me long to figure out in a film it's only going to be as good as it's written. So yeah. I all try to look for the page. I wanted to call it Tonto and his faithful companion Anglo, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, I, mu I must say, and, and this is a credit to the writers, they gave you wonderful prophetic dialogue. Your whole speech about. Don't judge a person by his color, judging by what kind of a man he is. And they would have only given stuff like that to uh, Jay Silverheels. Well, I'll tell you a really funny story. This uh, this guy that played the Lone Ranger, he uh, he's just going through. You know, I went I went to school in Santa Fe, and, and you know, and and, I, and we were, that's where we're filming, and we were there for a little couple months, and, and uh, people did not like him. He was rude to people. Well, he gets in this fight with these two guys, and they kick his ass. Yeah. So he comes limping into the into the Hilton, you know, like two in the morning, 
And the security guard calls and wakes me up and goes, Mr. Horse, the Lone Ranger has been in a fight. And I went, look, this family shit's in the movie. I said, this this kid's on his own. Don't be calling me. <laughs> well, and I was telling Terry when we, we, we watched it, I was like, you know, I, 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 I never really realized how much of a man's man Clayton Moore was. Until I oh, saw yeah. this other actor, because he came off to me like a kid trying to play dress up as the Lone Ranger. Like there was nothing there. <laughs> yeah, and they had to dub his whole voice in, and you know, it's just, but you know, I, I, you know, if it would have been a big hit, I, you know, I'd have been known as that guy, and you know, I escaped, and luckily I got to do, you know, I've, I've had a, you know, a forty-five year career, which is amazing, because. When I met my wife, she goes, I don't date actors. She goes, you ain't seen me work. I ain't that good. Let me run something for you. <laughs> well, we want to talk about Twin Peaks, but before we uh, do that, I do want to say <laughs> that you achieved a, a great level in history of knowing that Legend of the Lawn Ranger is not the worst Lawn Ranger movie. Oh, no. You know, I, I kept saying when they were going to, I said, one day they're going to do a great one. I'm going to be known as the, doing the crappy one. And here comes this Johnny Depp one. And the... And the and the theater went, I'm going to make this so shady that they're not even going to remember you did it. You did one. <laughs> so anyway, going on to David Lynch, and oh my God, I am such a fan. Now, I didn't yeah. know that you actually yeah. started with David Lynch before Twin Peaks. You did a short film for David Lynch. Yeah, me and Harry Dean Stanton. And me and Harry Dean, you know, the music, we've known each other for a billion years. And every time he would run into me, he'd act like he didn't remember who I was. <laughs> and that's okay. The 60s was really good to Harry, yeah. you know. <laughs> I am, you know, if I never did anything in my career, we changed the way that people process television. Yes. Yeah. Uh, everything that's good on TV peaks his DNA all over it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Terry told me that he wanted me to try to explain it to you, but we are such big Twin Peaks fans, Michael, that we're sitting in our studio right now, uh, yeah. and we fashioned our studio. We redesigned our entire studio to look like the Black Lodge. So we mm -hmm. have the curtain, the velvet curtains. We have the chevron floor. We have... We couldn't... We couldn't. We don't have David Lynch money, so we couldn't get a full size Venus de Milo. But we have an itty bitty Venus de Milo. So I mean, I, I t when I tell you that we're huge fans, I, I'm I am not joking at all. Uh, but and the thing about David, go ahead, David is a true artist. You know, I mean, you know, people do stuff for the money, and it, but that's not why David does it. It's in, it's in David's soul, right? You know. Well, one of the things that you and I had talked about, uh, and, and I wanted to discuss it on the air, we had talked about this off air a couple weeks ago, um, I, I wanted to get your opinion of what indigenous people think or feel about David Lynch's interpretation of like the dreamland and kind of like mysticism, because you had mentioned to me that it's kind of very similar. They love it. I have some friends that are huge huge, famous Native American artist. And they are, you know, there's one of, of, of a friend of mine, Tony Abeda, who is an amazing, you can Google him. His, his dad was a famous artist. He's a Navajo painter. He's just one of the best. And he's just fascinated by, by Twin Peaks. I mean, so many of the, of, the, of the Native artists that I know that are contemporary, that are filmmakers, are such a fan of David's work because they understand that the dream world is just as real as as the physical world. Mm -hmm. Now, how does David Lynch's uh, storyline of Twin Peaks, in, in what parts of, of the series were something that was very similar to real Indian lore, such as there is a black lodge and there is a white lodge, there's a good place and a bad place. Uh, how does that play into your mythology? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, you know, I'm the most, you know, I was living in the Bay Area near Brick. I'm the most un-New Age guy in the whole freaking world, you know. <laughs> there's, you know, there's, there's, the, the, the Black Lodge is, you know, that's, there's, that's a place of medicine, you know, not good or bad, it's a place of medicine, but up in that area, I mean, there's, there's places, you know, that's another thing about Twin Peaks, a lot of films, the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the physical, the physical terrain becomes a character as much 
as the actors. Right. You know, that was about John Ford stuff. I mean, Monument Valley, and you know, it's it's uh, it has a it has a, a an entity all to its own. But there's there's heavy medicine up at those places up yeah. there, and there's many legends of the Sky People among among all indigenous people, of the people that came from the stars. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if people know the map. We, we unroll the map the, the on Hyde. Right. You know, that's my work. Oh, oh it is. I mean, I, yeah, I do. You can, my wife has a website for anybody out there called Gathering Tribes. You can see my work on Gathering Tribes if anybody wants to look. And, and uh, my jewelry's on there. And uh, it's, uh, um, it's called Ledger Art. We used to paint on hides. And, and uh, it was our history book, our calendar. We could roll it up, take it with us when, when we go. And, you know, uh but uh, David said, would you do the map? And I went, oh, sure. And she says, how much do you want? I went, oh, no, God, it, it's a gift. No. And uh, I don't have any of your of your work. All I want is a little drawing. And, and about, uh, well, three weeks after after filming came one of his signed lithographs to me, you know, which is a, is a real treasure. You know? Wow. Yeah. So when uh, <laughs> they were writing to him, go ahead. Yeah, David is the kindest sweetest man. He's like Jimmy Stewart with Salvador Dali's intestines. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, I was going to ask you uh, what it was like. I mean, obviously, because <clears throat> you can be friends with somebody or even related to somebody, but when you go to work with somebody, it's a different story. So I was going to ask you what it was like to work with him and have David direct. I know David didn't direct every episode of Twin Peaks, um, but because a lot of times when you're dealing with somebody who is a genius... They can be quite difficult when they're directing. David. The maddest I ever saw David ever get is Jim Bellucci went off script, and David has one of the old time megaphone kind of electric game. He goes, "Mr. Bellucci, you want to go to the principal's office?" <laughs> you know, I've often wondered as an actor. It's one thing to know this legendary man is is directing you and head of the show along with Mark Frost. What's it like acting next to David Lynch? Did that make you more nervous when he was in scene with you as an actor? No, there are there are no nerves. You know, it's just it's just yeah, a, a wonderful family of just and and, and these brilliant actors like like Grace Sabrinsky and and Piper Laurie and you know and just they're so kind and so giving and you know and. And you know me, me and Harry still talk to each other, and Kimmy and and Dana, and and uh, uh, you know even after twenty five years, I went, I wonder how this is going to be. And Kyle, it was really interesting. I get up there, the first thing I see in the woods, Kyle comes up and out of the woods in the black makeup. Yeah. And I went, well, okay. And he goes, Michael, how you been? You know, and he's a big star. It's uh, everybody was wonderful. You know, Joan Chin was a little a little scary. He was dating Rudger Howard, and oh. Rudger Howard was sitting next to me, and he kept looking at me like De Niro, going, "You looking at me? <laughs> no, sir." I <laughs> wow. Well, everybody <laughs> was very disappointed when Michael Ankeen didn't come back for Showtime. Now, I, I understand he was quite sick. Is that why he didn't come back? I think so. But you know, uh, Mr. Frost. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, uh, um. um I'm getting a senior moment. The, the guy, the, Robert the, Forster. They, the, the Forster, yeah. He was supposed to be the original sheriff. Oh. He was. Yeah, he was, he was doing something else. But it was so funny. Two days of, of work, and he looks at me and goes, Michael, I don't get this. I go, you're not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was glad to hear you say that, because that was going to be my next question. And that, you know, we talked to Angus Scrim, who did a movie called Phantasm. And it's kind of like the dream world thing, like Twin Peaks. And he said, don't try to understand it. You can't understand it. W w mm -hmm. Am I fair to say that you don't really understand it all, and that's the way it should be? Well, some of it I do, some of it I don't. There's wonderful references, and, and but there's things in there I, you know, and... Uh, it's really funny the, uh, the the in the in the first season the one where we're we're th we're doing the Zen thing where we're throwing rocks at the bottle. Yes, yeah. Well, David says go get this bucket and pick it up, and he says I said okay. He says no, put these oven mitts on. And I went okay. And I go to grab the thing. He goes no, put the oven mitts and pick it up by the sides. And I went what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> 
Nothing. Wanted to see you in oven mitts. And I don't know. If, I don't know if you remember the old kung fu series when he finally graduated uh, uh, from from uh, from the kung fu. They he would grab this pot and he would burn those two dragons on the side and it went kung fu and they both laughed. You know. Yeah. And me and Mr. Frost have a real relationship too. I mean, he had great insight into into my character also. Did uh, David Frost, I mean, uh, David Lynch or Mark Frost, did they ever ask for any input as to writing of a script from you? They would ask from time to time. They would, you know, they go, is this, you know, what, what do you think of this? You know, and I'm like, yeah, it's okay, because, you know, I, I won't do stupid shit. You know, I don't care who. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't just, I mean, I do, I do really silly stuff. I, did, I did, just did this wonderful film called Dead Ants. That that's you can you can get it on on demand and it's freaking it's just freaking hysterical. My wife goes, "Why did you do this?" I go, "This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It's got to be a fist fight." Busey's <laughs> <laughs> kid and you know the girl from the L word and Tom Arnold and Tom Arnold is that guy in real life. Yeah. Right. That character, like that is him. You know. Right. But but yeah no they it, it, nobody we, we didn't have any problems you know. And and it was really interesting. People, we, when we didn't get any uh, any Academy Awards, uh, I mean, any Emmys, so, so they said you didn't get any Emmys. I go, look, nobody's going to know or care who won the Emmy, you know, ten years from now. But they're going to study that episode eight about the atomic bomb, yeah. the black and white one. They're going to study that in film school for eternity. Well, and the thing that's great about. Uh Twin Peaks and, and in general a, a lot of David's work but it's one of those things to where you can watch it every and every multiple times and every time you watch it you'll pick out some other nuance that you didn't realize was there before it's really interesting that kids like it I'm fascinated by that because it's slow it's really really slow right and, and and I wonder why and I realize you can't multitask and watch Twin Peaks <laughs> no. You can't be on your phone. You can't be talking to your friends. You have to get into David's world. Right. And I went, I think that fascinates young people. Yeah. Now, well, I'll in, tell knowing, you. in knowing that Twin Peaks was, as you mentioned, you know, very groundbreaking and, and it did, you know, it has kind of spilled over and, and influenced so many other projects. But at the time that Twin Peaks came out, it was on network television. It touched on a lot of topics that, at the time, were possibly taboo. Did you guys ever worry or get any flack or feedback for that? I mean, Let, let's put it this way: I, I think uh, <laughs> Deputy Hawk was the only one that didn't have sex with Laura Palmer, <laughs> and that included her dad. <laughs> the network was scared to death. You can see him every day showing up, going. Ah, uh, he's a genius, and they're going, uh, put this on, like, Sunday afternoon where nobody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> it was the death of it, you know? Do, do you think David Lynch and Mark Frost knew that talking or showing or talk? well, they showed it, too. Incest on uh, primetime television was, was a bit of a risk. Well, Mark knew, but David don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> He would say, David, you can't do this. And he goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> why can't I do it? But, yeah, Mark knew. Mark well, you, you guys Mark. have uh, such a following. And I know, do you still do the uh, Twin Peaks days where you show up and meet the fans? <laughs> you know what? It's starting to piss me off. I would do the Twin Peaks festival. There are all these things. Nobody ever asked me. Really? What? Why? <laughs> Usually I'm kind of busy. I don't, you know, I don't do a lot of that shit. But, uh, you know, I, the, I, the fans, I don't really need the money. You know, the fans would like to see me, you know. But no, they all these Twin Peaks festivals, and I'm never asked. Wow. Well, that's not right. I mean, well, not, I think so. <laughs> not only did, you know, uh, Deputy Hawk save Agent Cooper's ass a couple of times, but uh, <laughs> you're an integral part of the show, and you are part of the return, too. So you should definitely be there. I went over to, to London to do it just, you know, because it was the Lark and the fans were so excited to see me. But yeah, there's been five or six of these festivals and, you know, during COVID, I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that shit. You know? right. But I mean, there's, but, you know, the last six or seven years is these festivals. I never asked. 
And people go, well, we, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll get on, uh, I'll get on my Instagram and I go, man, I didn't ask the hawk. And people, go, well, we didn't know you wanted to do it. I go, well, nobody asked. Yeah. Well, you, we, we can't find you. I go, film students in first year film students in freaking Nebraska can find it. Right. Yeah. You can find it. Right. Yeah, we found you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a, a couple controversial questions, and if you don't want to answer, it's perfectly okay. Uh, a lot of people felt that because there was somewhat of a feud between uh, David Lynch and Sherilyn Fenn, that when they brought the cast back for the Showtime thing, that he kind of maybe penalized her by putting her in a nut house. She she wasn't acting with the rest of the cast. She was like segregated. Do you know anything about that? Sherilyn was a little disappointed because we had her on the show too and she talked about it. She was a little upset. She was really disappointed. You know, and I don't I don't you know, I don't hang with the people. And like I said, I'll talk to them. I don't hang with actors, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I think she pushed David a little bit too hard. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And then the other thing is, there was one cast member, of course, Michael Onkin was. You know, people ask me, you work with David? I go, you know, David will call when it's in his head. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So, so what about? about go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Onkin. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the situation? To where uh, there was always two people that was very important, and there was the giant, and he came back. We had him on the show. He, he's a great guy. But there was also a little guy that did not come back because he got in a major fight with David Michael Lynch. Michael J. Anderson. What do you think about uh, the situation when Michael J. Anderson didn't come back on? Uh, you cut out a little bit. What was that? I didn't know anything about it. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there was some huge feud, but you know, we we won't say one way or the other because we have no idea what's what's true and what's not. <laughs> you know, you you know, to, you know, people say, well, you, uh, you know, if if the if the, the 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 season had come back, and I would have just I would have done a cameo and just been, you know, I would have done it for free. Mm -hmm. You know, they were very generous in the character they wrote yeah. me. You know, but you know, these some of these these actors that push, you know, you you know, it's like. Uh, Sabrina and I are, are really good friends, and I told her, I said, just, you know, to be on David Lynch's palette, right. you know, it's like, would I get pissed if Picasso said, I'm doing this great painting, and I'm going to do a little drawing of you down in the very corner, you could go, no, I want it bigger, right. you know, right. this, you, you should, you know, and, 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 no, I don't, you know, I, 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 People that push on David are stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I well, totally agree. And it, you know, it, it it it's true, and it works out because I mean, if you take a look at the return, obviously, you know, uh, Kyle MacLachlan was a huge part of it, but Hawk had a very big pivotal part of the return. Oh no, they were, uh, you know, they were they were really generous. You know, I didn't expect to have that kind of. Uh, like I said, I if I would have just had a cameo, it would have been all new actors. I would have been, you know. I would have loved to have done it. I would have probably done it for free. You know? Well, that was a kick-ass knife throw that you had in Twin Peaks. <laughs> Is that something that oh, you do? I mean, you're good at that, or? Well, yeah, I do. I do. You know, I do all that stuff. I, you know, I did. A, I did a lot of fights and stuff, and you know, I still do a lot of that stuff. But my wife will watch this thing. She goes, "Why aren't you as cool as the Hawk?" What? Like, Nobody's as cool as the Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and a good-looking guy to boot. I'm telling you, you still look good. I, I but still, uh, yeah, I, I was going to say I still think it's insane that Showtime had even considered trying to bring Twin Peaks back without the involvement of David Lynch. <laughs> the, the deal of it is, your standard script is maybe thirty-five, maybe forty pages, right? Right. So David, David hands them like a four hundred page, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And they go, we didn't tell you you'd have the money to do this. And he went, well, I ain't doing it then. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you, because everybody who follows Twin Peaks at all was literally flabbergasted because at the end of the first series, you know, the, the statement was said, I'll see you in 25 years. And we just thought, okay, th you know, that's just an artistic thing. It's just dialogue. It means nothing. It's just David Lynch, you know, doing his, you know, creative thing and Mark Frost doing his creative thing. And then, son of a bitch, 25 years later, it comes back. 
what do you think or do you know if that was something that David had actually planned or did it just happen that way? It came back after 25 years like they said it would. Well, who in the hell knows, you know. I think David didn't even really want to do it anymore. I think what I heard is Mark kind of talked him into it. You know, he said, David, you know, we could use the money. And David went, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, but I don't, you know, I don't, you know. David and I are close, you know. We have a, we have a lot of similarities. We both started as artists. Mm -hmm. You know, we both around the same age and, you know, came out of the, the 60s and 70s, you know. So there's a lot of similarities. And one part of me, you know, like, you know, I, which is, I'm sure David's going through the same stuff, especially through COVID, you know, it's it's like, I miss making films. I miss my Twin Peaks family, but I'm also really happy to just be in my studio creating art. Right. Yeah, we want to know and more about that because I'm definitely wanting to buy some of your jewelry. Tell me about some of the pieces you made, how you work, how you create uh, the process, and how we can get the stuff off the website you were talking about. Well, we have very few. You know, I've been. We moved. We just moved from uh, from the Bay Area down to the Palm Springs area. So. I haven't done a lot. I've, I've got very few pieces on the website, and I've got some, you know, but I've got some, uh, I've got some uh, uh, Twin Peaks kind of related uh, 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 paintings, kind of, you know. I do this work called ledger art, which a, a very, a few of us natives brought back. Like I said, we used to paint on the hides, but then on the reservation, the buffalo are gone. So we painted on scrap paper that was around, mostly ledger papers that took records of things and old maps and love letters. And I paint on a, a lot of these old maps and, and uh, um, uh, 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 love letters and tribal uh, pieces and treaty deeds and all kinds of really interesting things. So that people can see that there. And, you and even, can they get it directly through GatheringTribes.com or is there somewhere else where they should go? I, I'm asking for personal well, reasons because we want to buy no, some stuff. <laughs> no, just Gathering Tribes. I was in two major galleries for years. I was in one in Sedona for 48 years. Mm. And then I was in Santa Fe for, for, for about 35. And both of them went out of business in the last five or six years. You know, they... The, the people just got older and sold it, so I don't have any galleries anymore. So, And like I said, now I'm, I'm just kind of uh, 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 regrouping, you know, to see, see what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll probably be doing some more artwork. I, it's really funny, every now I do this jewelry, I did a little silver log, just because right. I thought it was cool. And every time, I, you know, I can't, I don't, I don't make that many of them, so I'll make like 25 or 30 of them, and I'll put them on, they'll go on the website, and... Boom, there, my, my wife goes, they're gone in a half an hour. And people go, I didn't do one. Or I, I do a little silver owl that right. I'll do from time right. to time. I mean, but uh, right. yeah, it's really funny. Everybody collects native art. I collect Anglo folk art. I've got a <laughs> Don one. I do. I've got a Best of the Osmonds pre Donnie. I've got a lot of times people in the museum, you'll see a scalp shirt and it's on this big stick. I have a leisure suit on this stick with a little white shoe. <laughs> Oh, you're funny. You're funny. Now, I, tell, I, me, tell me what, because I, I had never heard of this. What is tufa casting? Tufa is one of the oldest ways of making jewelry. Tufa is a volcanic uh, chalk, hmm. like big pieces of white chalk. And it, it comes from uh, a lot of them, most around Arizona, New Mexico. And, and uh, you, you take it and you cut it in, in half and you carve a, 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 an indention in it. And then you put another piece on top of it. And you pour the silver into it. So a lot of the the really old, old, especially old Navajo and Hopi stuff is is made in this tufa casting, and it's it's a it's a very organic process, you know. Wow, wow! I because I was I had never heard of it, and I was reading up on it, and I had read that if it's even done even slightly wrong, the whole thing can explode, right? Oh, well, yeah, because uh, uh, silver doesn't flow like water. That's like most jewelry that's casted is in some kind of a vacuum machine that will suck it down into every little cavity. So when you're doing tufa, you have to cut all these little air channels and stuff where you know it's going to go. Sometimes I'll, I can spend three or four, four hours doing a carving, and, and it won't work, and i got to start all over again. Right, right. Now, I've got to yeah. ask you about Kimmy Robertson. I am totally and madly in love with her. I think she's got a crush on me too. I'm not. I'm not. She, she was at my house. She came to my house to see me. Yeah, she was at my house. I was flipping out. Here I'm a big, you know, fan of hers. And I was shit my pants. She was in the house. But the way she acts, she is so cute and so colorful. And she's like 
a human cartoon, but she's I know very unassuming. I know from her being at my house that she's that way in person. Am I right? I mean, she's oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. She's you know, and she's got a history. She was she was a dancer. She was going with would go on tour with big rock and rollers and stuff. Yeah, Kimmy has a whole a whole history there. But uh, yeah, Kimmy's a, a very unique individual, and we're you know we, we'll talk from time to time and. So there's a lot of interesting theories on things Miss Kimmy does. Well, if you want to get more bookings and, and conventions and stuff, get a hold of her because her and Deputy Andy's doing these all the time. Oh, I talk to him all the time. I still don't get invited. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. I'll, I'll have to give her a call about that. She'll be like, oh, Terry. <laughs> you know, I've, 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 I bitched to Harry the other day. There's, there's two of them going on. I said, no, nobody called me. You know, yeah. and and most most of the time I don't even want to go. Yeah. But, but, but you know, for a while there, I got I don't give a shit. You know, right. but then I went. You know, the fans go, why aren't you? Why don't you come to these? I go, nobody asked. That's you funny. know, I don't even. Get, you know, my wife says you want it. You want an Instagram? And I went, oh, not really. She goes, get an Instagram. And I go, look, me and Sting hanging out together. I have a hundred and seventy five likes. She goes, your cat Carlos has over six thousand. <laughs> Oh, I've got you know, to ask you. What's funny is I was on your Instagram, yeah. Michael, and I saw all the great photos you have up there. I saw the photo that you have, you know, with with various celebrities. And the thing mm -hmm. I told Terry about was your cat, Carlos. <laughs> yeah. I, I will pose Carlos in different Twin Peaks situations. <laughs> you know, when we went over, when we went to Europe, people go, "Did Carlos come?" <laughs> no, Carlos didn't come. <laughs> I came home and the suitcase was full of cat toys that people were bringing to Carlos. You know? <laughs> now, we were uh, we were talking to Kimmy about the actress that portrayed the log lady, Catherine uh, Coulson. And yeah. she unfortunately died. And when she did the Showtime show, she knew she was dying, but she had to come back with the fans. It's something that she wanted. And Kimmy couldn't even finish talking about it. She said it was so heartbreaking having to go through that. Were you on set that day? Uh, yeah, but I mean, when I got to say goodbye to her, you know, I mean, people go, why didn't you cry? I go, I couldn't. I just wanted to portray how brave she was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it was you and her that was in the scene. And, and uh, well, I knew her. I knew Jack really well. What was interesting also, the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, agent that handled me when I was renting an art studio for her handled Jack. And, and, uh, one day, you know, I'm not even in the movie business, really, and I get Jack, and I go, Hey, Jack, I'm a pretty out there dude. What the hell did a racer head mean? <laughs> and I, I have a picture of Jack from a racer head says, Figure it out yet, love Jack. Uh. <laughs> everything made sense through Jack's eyes. Yeah. Right. I mean, me and, and, uh, and Everett, me and Big Ed would hang out, and I go, I go, Everett, man, do you, do you get what's going on here? He goes, No, let's go ask Jack. <laughs> and Jack would, Jack would explain it, and wow. it made sense. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's what I like about David Lynch and loyalty. Like, him and Jack yeah. go way back, and they wind up in almost everything David Lynch does. And, and the only problem David Lynch worried about Jack with, I, I guess Jack was quite a racist. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack, Jack yeah, was an interesting guy. <laughs> 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 so, what other Twin Peaks cast members uh, would you like to comment on? Which ones did you like the best? Was there any you didn't oh, like? Oh, that's hard. I know it's hard, but I put oh, people on the spot. I, I love Dana. Dana, and to see Dana grow up, uh, uh, that character grow up and, and become, you know, become a, a deputy, and you know, I just Dana. Dana and I talk all. We're, we're we're probably the closest. I just love him. He's the sweetest, sweetest, kindest guy, and I love Harry. You know, I mean, Harry just Harry, Harry disappeared. Yeah. And I go, where's Harry? And he said, he's herding cattle on a cattle ranch <laughs> in New Mexico. And I went, no, no. And he was. Wow. You know, he, yeah, yeah he, had, he had this friend at a cattle ranch. And he was working. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I love Harry. Well, you know? What about, yeah, it, it was a great scene when, when you guys figured it out and finally arrested him. What was Ray Wise like to work with? Oh, Ray's just a, a pro. And again, Somebody with that talent is so kind and so giving. Quick to Twin Peaks story, when we finally get Bob we're out of Ray, mm -hmm. we're getting Bob, that spirit is coming out of Ray, right? Yeah. 
and we're all in that room. And again, I'm the most undue age guy in the world, but I don't want to be calling on those kind of things. Right. And they said, somebody should go for help. And went, I'll go, I'll go. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, is Michael, there... Michael, Michael Parks and I were old friends, too. And Michael Parks is a tough dude, right? Well, oh, let me tell so, you, Michael Parks would kick your ass. <laughs> it's too bad he passed so Michael, away. Michael Parks is, is supposed to be dead, right, laying yeah. there. And Lynch goes, kick him and make sure he's dead. And Michael and I, we know each other. We would ride bikes together and stuff. He looks up with one eye like, you kick me, I'll kill you. Went, oh, no, he's dead. He's, he's dead, dude. He's dead, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, one of the things that a lot of Twin Peaks fans uh, always talk about is the fact that uh, Frank Silva, who ended up playing Bob, uh, yeah. he wasn't an actor, right? He was just a crew member. Oh. No, he was a set decorator, and he raised his head up one day, like, from the bed, and, and David goes, that's Bob, and, and, and Frank went, oh, no, no, please, David. <laughs> God, I wish I had luck like that, geez. <laughs> so is, is there any one single figure in Indian lore that's like or similar to what a Bob would be? Oh, so oh, many, many, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, you know. The, the the whole spectrum of 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 the human experience and, and of the people in the spirit world and you know I mean if you most of the ceremonies especially the Pueblo ceremonies and Yaki ceremonies are this big huge psychodrama that's going on and oh yeah there's you know definitely definitely characters of, of e evil and you know people will come and dances with with masks and stuff representing that part of, of the human condition. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I wanted to ask you this for sure. David's quite up in age. He's still doing well. I watch his videos, uh, talk about his projects, and, and he gives the day and the date and, and the weather and all that on, on YouTube. But knowing his age and stuff, and, and knowing, at least so far, he only does Twin Peaks every 25 years, <laughs> <laughs> is there a possibility that it could come back before David's gone? I hope so. Yeah. I, uh, David's one of those people, you know, that, that, that will have art projects in his head till the day that he goes. Right. And and I'm I'm sure he will. You know, and, and you know, David's you know, David's laying pretty low, which is smart right now. You know, yeah. you have you know you, yeah, that's pretty scary, you know, and, yeah. and uh but I think so and I hope so and you know, I like I said, I would I would come and do one line for David. You know, when we were when we were doing the the new the new uh, or, or the new episodes, people would come down to where we were filming, find out the writers and directors, and 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 they said, "Look, we don't want to disturb Mr. Lynch. We just want to shake his hand." Yeah. And yeah. people crew members crew members that were, were retired from from working came back to work with David one more time. I mean, as I tell actors, I said, if you ever get the opportunity to work with somebody like 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 David, I mean. You don't get to you don't get to work with with somebody that that that, that does art like that. It's just you know, and he's kind. I, I mean, I worked for some guys that were real. I mean, you know, they're they're real assholes. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've almost we've almost gone to blows with people. But I'll go over to the crew and I go, "Is that guy that good?" And they go, "Yeah." You know, and I said, "I'll go up to him and say, look, you know, you can you can you can treat me like this, but this better be Emmy quality shit when I see it, or I'm gonna whoop your ass." You know. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm so. <laughs> Put up with that, but but David David's such a kind man, you know. I'm so glad you got to know uh, Dean Stockwell. I was oh, Dean and I were friends. Dean and I and Russ, you know, we we lived, we were neighbors. They would tell me stories. I mean, you know, they were they were child actors back in the day, you know. Yeah, we were. Uh, well, we mentioned that because we never got a chance to to talk to Dean, <clears throat> but we were huge Dean. We we are huge Dean Stockwell fans, and mm -hmm. it, it hit us really hard when he passed last year. It's too bad that Dean wasn't in Twin Peaks because I know Harry oh, Dean Stanton was. was, but yeah, no, no, Dean is. You know, Dean was. You know, and they they came up one day with by with uh, with uh, 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 Dennis Hopper. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but no, they and, and you know and 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 Russ is you know I used to see Russ and you know living in Topanga Canyon was just you know everybody lived up there. Neil Young was up there and and uh, Billy uh, uh, Billy uh, Thornton was up there at one time and 
you know, a lot of actors and stuff were up there. My favorite kind of actor is like a, a Jack Nicholson, Peter Fonda, uh, Dennis Hopper, Dennis Bruce Hopper, Dern, Bruce Dern, yeah. all those. So glad you got to work with with. She is great because I had Bruce Dern on my radio show, and oh, she yeah. was just coming up. And to know she is now an Oscar winner. His little girl, Laura. Yeah. And when she dedicated it to her dad, she dedicated the Oscar to the legendary Bruce Dern, my father. I start crying. Oh, yeah. You know, all those old guys, I would ask, you know, a lot of crew guys, those old, you know. You know, my, my stepdad, my adopted stepdad is, is, you know, ever since I was really little, he was a, a, a game guide. And he would take all these guys hunting, man. He would take, like, like uh, Gable and, 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 you know, all these big, these yeah. old stars. Take them. One day, this big uh, yellow convertible pulls up in front of the house, and there's a little dark man with, with these a big, huge brunette and a blonde. You know, something that looks like something that came out of, uh, of a cartoon. And it went to my mom. I go, "Who is that?" And I went, "That and mom goes, that's Sabu, that come to see my dad." But uh, two 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 guys that were kind of like uncles to me were uh, were uh, uh, Andy Devine and. Uh, Slim Pickens. Oh my God! Wow. Oh, what a yeah. oh, great! Yeah, they were, they were, you know, they were they were kind of buddies of of, of my dad's. Now I had yeah, my dad. What? My dad could never figure out what I did for a living. He goes, "What are you doing, huh?" Oh, I'm I'm falling off my horse. And they go, "Well, no, how do you get paid?" They go, "They pay me to fall off my horse." Goes, <laughs> now I'm, I'm looking at my baby. notes and I'm trying to pronounce uh, what Indian blood you have and your combination Yakwai, Mescalero. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and tell me what it is. Yeah, some Solero and and in Swedish. Ah, very good. And what I want to know is this, because I approached this in the beginning and said I was going to ask you, and I never did. I guess you got the greatest honor in the world when you did Tonto to where one of the heads of the Indian organizations told you what they thought of your portrayal. Do you remember what he told you? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean uh, 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 Dennis Banks? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I'm I'm an old American Indian movement member, and you know, I mean, I was out, I was fighting, you know, fighting the people long before, you know, I was up around the Alcatraz and all that stuff, and you know, wounded knee, and and uh, 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 I said, Dennis, they want me to be Tonto, and he goes, you know, Michael, man, you 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 can do something for you know, especially for kids with this, you know, and he saw it, and he goes, you did a good job, and I went, oh, thanks, you know. And he said, yeah, out too, that, that you brought no embarrassment, you brought pride to the yeah, uh, Indian yeah. nation. That's yeah, something else. Yeah. As much pride as you can get with Tonto, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is Tonto somebody that the Indian nation reveres? Because it was written by no, a white man, of course. Yeah, no, not not really. It's it's a stereotypical bit. But Jay was so, he was, you know, he was the real deal. And he had an acting workshop. He had a Native American acting yeah. workshop. and. I mean, people know what a really good actor. I mean, him and his brother at Key Largo. If you watch Key Largo, you'll see him and his brother in a small scene in Key Largo. But, yeah. you know, Jay was, Jay was amazing, you know. Well, before we go, I, one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, it, we love watching uh, shows and, and seeing people come on the screen that we didn't necessarily expect. Although, I guess in this case, we should have expected it. We're big fans as well of The X-Files. And I think more than once, Chris Carter has been influenced by Twin Peaks. Obviously, David Duchovny is is a connection between Twin Peaks and the X Files. But you were on the X Files as well as as well as other Twin Peaks actors have been. What was it like being on the X Files, and what was it like working again with David and seeing David on set again? Well, when David played, when David wasn't a big star when he played Denise, right? No, you know? right, right. The, the, the crew's kind of looking at him like, is this a real drag queen? Or, you know, <laughs> I'm hanging out with my arm around him and shit. So I take a picture of me and Denise, right? And and one of the, you know, I, if I known Twin Peaks was going to be as huge, I, w- I would have stolen everything that wasn't on the set, you know? <laughs> uh, and I, had a, I had a Polaroid. So when I, when I did uh, uh, um, X Files, I, I said, do you, do you know I used to date David's sister? I'm in the, I'm in the, <laughs> And they go, we didn't know he had a sister. I go, yeah, it's just me and David's sister. So he comes in, they go, we didn't know you had a sister. And he goes, that's me, you idiot. <laughs> when, when, when he came out dressed in a drag on Twin Peaks, yeah. did he act embarrassed? Were you guys all laughing at him? Or what? No, not at all. No, no. I mean, it's, you know, he was, 
you know, there's another guy that's that's so sweet and so kind and so giving and so smart, you know. And Carter, you know, I mean, the, the one I did a couple of the X Files, but the one with the rare wolf, uh, Carter told me that was one of the only two real government X File cases. Hmm. Really? And his favorite line, he said, is when when the when they go into the bar, there's an old native guy in the, in the very back goes, "Go home, FBI." <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, we're we're going to find a Michael Horse movie tonight. Of all the movies you made that were non Twin Peaks related or whatever, uh, what do you suggest we find and watch? Well, I want you to find Dead Ant. I just recently did it. Okay. It's the story of a '70s hair band called Sonic Grave. They had one hit. They're trying to get another hit for years. Their their manager Tom Arnold is taking them across the desert in a in a airstream thinking they're going to get cello. Halfway, he says, it's no cello. <laughs> and I'm good to hear that because we have access to that one. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna laugh here, but it, it is so, so freaking funny. But uh, I did the series Claws uh, a couple of, you know, my, eight, uh, my, my, my whole career is an experiment, bizarre booking, you know. <laughs> I mean, Young Guns was written for me, and they go, no, you're not young, and we can't use you. And, you know, and then something, I... I my agent goes, they want you to do this thing about a nail salon and the bomb. And I went, huh? huh. And it's it, it flawed. You right. know, and, and it, a really funny series. And again, these amazing, amazing uh, actresses that I had to come up with 110% just to keep up with. But it was the worst. A friend of mine created it. And, and I think it was a joke. And, and uh, 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 Peggy's uh, uh, Lipton's daughter produced it. Ah. So I go, and where's, where's my, my wardrobe? And they go, right there. I go, that is a black and white checkered coat and lime green pants <laughs> and yellow shoes. And they go, yeah, that's what you're going to wear. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. you're, you're, you're kidding me. Yeah, but I'm on this thing now. It's called the uh, Motherland Fort Salem. Mm -hmm. You can see, you can. it's about witches, and it's actually really clever. And you can see they've already had two seasons of it. But it's it's probably my favorite character I've ever done. It'll it'll start probably in uh, we've been filming. It probably start in uh, in June. You know, there you go. I've been up to sitting in a hotel mm. because the COVID things get shut down. I'm so bored. I'm watching mm. curling and Canadian <laughs> baking shows. Well, you know, one of my favorite moments of Twin Peaks I got to mention was when they had a reunion with two of the Mod Squad cast members, uh, oh, yeah. Peggy Lipton and Clarence Williams the third. That was magic. I was laughing at Clarence. He's in the Mountie uniform. Because he laughed and I go, you ever been to Canada? He goes, no. You ever see a black Mountie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And he goes, he goes, Do they have any? He go, I've never seen one. I don't know anybody that's ever seen one. I'm sure they are now, but they didn't back then. Right. You know? I mean, talk about, I mean, talk about an actor who's intense. I, I, so many of his roles, I'm just like, I sit back and I'm like, wow. Yeah. And thank God to David Lynch for bringing Peggy Lipton out of retirement because she had, she, well, she did a whole music thing. I got a couple of her record albums. She was married to Quincy yeah. Jones and raising her kid. But she didn't do anything for a long time. And thanks to David Lynch, we got her back. Unfortunately, we've now lost her. I was so heartbroken. Yeah, I got a chance to see her before she passed. I, I you know, and like I said, the Twin Peaks family, everybody... We knew we were doing something really special at the time, but we had no, you know, coming back 25 years and realizing. And the Twin Peaks fans are the greatest fans. My wife goes, your fans are so sweet and so polite and so smart. My Walker, Texas Ranger fam, uh, fans scare me. They go, will you sign my baby? <laughs> no. <laughs> you your baby? Well, if you're, really bored, if you're really bored after the interview, if you get Peacock there... Make sure you tune in to Kyle McLaughlin's new show, which is about the Tiger King. But he's been pretty good. He's playing. He's been playing yeah, her I've husband. Got, got yeah, I've got to see that. You know what a what an interesting that. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting to 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 download that and see it. You know, yeah. it's really interesting too. I'm a fan of westerns. Oh yeah. And people say westerns are dead. Are dead. Well, Yellowstone's the biggest. You know, it's the biggest thing on cable and the. The eighteen eighty three. I thought, yeah. oh, they got these two. They got these two singers. That's the, you know they're going to suck. They were brilliant. 
Yeah, no, Western seem mm-hmm. to be having a resurgence uh, lately. And I can see you getting some jobs out of that. I hope they start hiring you for that. Yeah, I would love to, you know, I would love to do another Western. That's a, I've been doing, I, I did uh, I did Godless, and I did uh, Hell on Wheels about the railroads and... And uh, you know, I've been I've been working on on a, on a couple of western stuff, but I'd uh, I'd like to 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 really sink my teeth into something. You know, I'm really interested in in about the history of of Native people uh, in 1920, 1930. Right. You know, you don't see a lot of that, and you know, you know, I I remember talking to elders. Well, you know, what was it like? You know, I mean, people weren't off the reservation, you know, that long after that. You know. Well, let's let's pray Twin Peaks comes back. I don't want Kyle left in that alternate universe. Because <laughs> talk about cliffhangers. David kills you. With, with, he don't even know the show's ever coming back. He didn't know the first time. And he left everybody hanging when, when Kyle smashed his face into that mirror. I mean, man, I'm in agony. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't mean to, to be hanging. It's just, you know, I mean, Twin Peaks, it, it, it's alive. It has a, you, you know, and it, it grew... You know, I don't think that they knew where they were going with it. You know, yeah. but I, I wouldn't give up on another one. You know, I, you know, like I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to hawk the die and go up in the spirit world. You know, I would love to see a book written by you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> well, I know you illustrated a book your wife did, right? No, we were going to, and we never got around oh, okay. to doing it. All right. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of stuff we never got around to doing. Well, as we as we wrap this up, Michael, I wanted to say uh, I don't know how long ago uh, he he joined this world, but I know you just got to meet him last week. So I want to congratulate you on your new grandson. Oh, he's the sweetest little guy, you know. And you you sing you sing to the little the little guys when they're in the tummy, and I I was wondering if he was going to remember, and and I think he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a beautiful video that you posted, and so congratulations to you and your daughter. It's a really sweet song, you know. It's a re- it's a long, much longer song. I guess they they I, I was singing. And yeah, they can we hear a little? Long. Can we hear just a little bit of it? Let me see. Like that. Beautiful. All right. That's such an honor to have you do that here. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us on this weekend. I encourage everyone to uh, check out Michael's Instagram. Also, check out GatheringTribes.com. Watch there's, there's for his new projects, including where he bio. plays an old guy. Yeah, four hundred year old. Complain to the Twin Peaks festivals why nobody wants to hawk. Yeah, think, what the hell? I think the Twin and I would not put this past them because the Twin Peaks fans, as you said, are great and loyal and mighty. I think that there should be uh, some kind of a petition or a movement like this needs to stop. This is not right. Yeah, you know, it I didn't really. A lot of times I didn't want to do it, and a lot of times I'm just busy. But now, come my feelings are hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that there's a couple that that everybody has tried to say was hard to a couple of actors that they said were kind of reclusive one of them uh was big ed they said that he's really hard to get a hold of i, I don't know if oh, that's yeah. true or not but i've never heard I that can, about I you can, I can get a hold of everett there was there well, was well actually people. well david lynch actually did because he said in an interview that when he was trying to get everybody together for the showtime revival that he kept calling and couldn't get a number and he happened to call a uh, phone number that was a cabin in the woods in Canada or something, and Big Ed was just there renovating the place and happened to pick up the phone. Other than that, David had no other contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a pretty, he's a pretty, a pretty reclusive guy. You, know? <laughs> you gotta yeah, see. I, I don't know if you've seen it or not. You gotta see Everett and his uh, cohort in yeah, Twin Peaks uh, uh, in, in a movie called People Under the Stairs. That's awesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a really you know. Have you seen that Michael Parks movie Tusks? Uh, I don't believe no, so. I haven't but seen I, it. Used watch, Ooh, I used to watch. I used to watch. What was his old TV series where he rode a motorcycle? Then oh, came Bronson. Bronson. Yes, I was yeah. a big fan of that. Tusks is the weirdest, strangest movie ever made. Really? Ever? Really? Oh, it, it's just so wrong. <laughs> it, 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 it takes a lot to shock me, tell you. And I'm watching it thing going, "Oh God, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, 
it's really twisted. But it's, I think that more fucked up than a racer head, huh? Oh, it makes a racer head look like Disney. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will have to check that out because that it, it's, we're the same. It takes quite a bit to shock us. So if it, if it shocks you, it would probably shock us. Yeah, you, you have to watch uh, Dead Ass. It's in the, yeah. and at the end, I mean, this director was just crazy, and, and I'm doing stunts in there. I got no business doing. It. I almost killed. There's a lot of little people. I don't know. Half of my career has to do with there's little people in it. You know. <laughs> And you see him, he goes, grab the little guy and, and, and grab him and look at him tenderly and all well, answer, trying to kill everybody. And I'm going, are we a couple? That wasn't in the script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every, every, everyone's a little and, people next to the giant from Twin Peaks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Carl. And then, and, and, and then I go, he goes, you have a problem? I go, no, I live in the Bay Area. I'm going to be a gay icon, you know? <laughs> and there's another... There's another movie if you can find if you can find it called Rented Lips. Okay. Okay. Me, uh, Martin Mull, Dick Sean, Jennifer Tilly, uh, Bob Downey Jr. and Bob Downey Sr. directed it. Hmm. Oh. And me and June Lockhart, me and June Lockhart are having a love affair, and I'm living on Martin Mull's lawn on a teepee, and and uh, it's it's. Yeah, that's probably my favorite movie, if you can find it. Oh, we'll have to look for it. Now, that explains, you put the pieces together for me, Michael, because that explains the connection with you and Jennifer Tilly. Because I saw her her up on your Instagram making, you know, hubba hubba comments on all of the photos that you had posted. And I was like, I wonder if they're friends. I I, I wonder what the connection is. I don't hang with actors. Me me and, and Jennifer are really close. I mean, I you know I used to go to her house and play cards with her and and uh, yeah you know we haven't you know we haven't seen each other for a while because of COVID but right. no she's she's a really good friend she is the smartest woman that 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 I know she's another so bright. another actress that worked with her that used to be a host on the station was in my studio uh, yes. uh, Diane Franklin told me that oh, yes. Jennifer doesn't talk in person like she does on the screen she doesn't sound all ditzy and you know. No, no, no. She's really smart. Yeah, she's, she's really smart and kind and nice and, and, and you know and right. and uh, yeah. That's about the only actors I, I you know that I hang with. Well, know. I achieved I my. Go ahead. I now live in this like uh, 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 like a uh, kind of a mobile home park. It's really cool and way out in the desert. And there's a lot of retired musicians and and. Uh, and teachers and old bikers and Canadian Mormons. There you go. <laughs> well, now that I've achieved my dream of talking to you, it's been such an honor. <laughs> if my second dream can become fulfilled someday, and to have you in my Black Lodge, in my Black Lodge theme studio, up in the mountains of Lake Hughes, California, that would be great. Oh, oh yeah. Where's Lake Hughes again? I know and I don't know. Um, so if you're... If you know, do you know where Santa Clarita is in California? Like where it's Six Flags Ooh. is? Yeah, I, I grew up in San Fernando. Okay, so yeah, know? if you go up San Francisco Canyon, if you go up about 30 miles oh, into oh, the yeah, Angeles yeah. National Forest, that's where we're at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, sometime, you know, I'll, the, the, I'll give you a call. I got you, that's your other number? Yes, that's the other number. Except the only problem is you become part of the collection because I got all this Twin Peaks stuff, <laughs> so we couldn't let you go home. We'd have to live here. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll I'll bring you something. To you. It's really funny. This time when I was filming, they were watching me because I'll steal everything and have it nailed down. <laughs> you know, and they go, Michael, what's in the bag? Oh, nothing. We're gonna look in the bag, Michael. <laughs> all right. You know, I gotta put admit, I I was an actor on the West Wing, and I stole something. So, <laughs> and do you worry about it? I still worry about it. I feel the backs of, of really obscure actors' chairs and Southern, you know. You know be <laughs> oh. so what, what, what was funny is... What, what did you steal from Twin Peaks? Uh, I'm not going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Michael, again, thank you. Please keep in contact. The other phone number you have for me, that's my cell phone. So feel free to call or text anytime you want. Uh, we'd love to keep okay. in contact with you, and we'd love to have you here someday. Well, thank you, Mike. I'm sorry I rambled to you, but I'm lonely. No, this was wonderful. We we love interviews like this to where it just feels like we're sitting around having a cup of coffee and we feel like we've known you forever. It's and we, we hope we can have the honor of calling you our Kimo Sabi. 
It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's an old cartoon, and, and and the Lone Ranger is in the old folks' home, and finally reading a book, it says meaning of Kimosabe, and he goes, "That asshole." <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Thank you again so much, Michael, and we hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And give Carlos a pet for us. I will. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Have All a right. great night.